Stephen Skinner, attorney at law, joins us. Good morning, Stephen. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? I am even better. Thanks for asking, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, good to have you on the show again. It's been a few months. Hope you've been good. It has. I've been well, um, ready to get into fall, um, but it doesn't seem like the weather's going to cooperate. <laughs> we are, I think, 10 degrees above normal this week, but we've dodged the summer heat wave that's mostly enveloped much of the rest of the yeah. country. It's, we're going to get it for about a week here, but it's going to chill out again next week. We're in studio with Jonathan Bodwell, Matt Miller as well, attorney law Stephen Skinner, whose firm has, uh, and Stephen himself, done so much work on the opioid cases uh, over the last, I think you said the last time we talked, Stephen, seven years involvement in this and uh yes yeah you, you've taken it from the beginning and now um not quite to the end but getting closer we now have uh, a west virginia first foundation that has been uh the members have been named and these are the folks who will be in charge of figuring out how to uh appropriately uh spend and distribute this billion dollars in money that's been awarded to west virginia Stephen. that's right so we're right now um, basically waiting on the handoff from the court. Um, the court has approved all of the settlements um, and all of the, the state and the local governments who are participating have agreed to all of the settlements. All of the forms have been submitted. The last set finally came in uh, last week. The, uh, the court, and this is a special court in West Virginia, and it, um, it deals with when you have cases where there are many, many, many different claims against um, individual parties. And, and this has dealt with the state-based claims, there are also the federal claims. But we um, negotiated the settlements for the federal cases within the context of the state court. That is incredibly um, uh, difficult to explain uh, and just doesn't happen that often. But all the settlements have been reached. So the money, it, part of the money has already come in. And the money is going to be coming in in many cases over the next, you know, 10 plus years. We're going to be dealing with some folks who we reached uh, settlements with who have since filed for bankruptcy. So that money will, there'll be different amounts of money coming in as a result of that uh, over time and hopefully. Um, so we say a billion dollars. We don't know exactly what it's going to be now. The court now has to say um, we, we are going to pay the expenses, and this is what we're going to pay, and then they're going to approve the division of the money um, that goes first into the foundation, which you were just referring to, and second, the direct payments to the local governments. Now, that, that all goes comes back, I guess it was uh, coming on two, coming on three years ago, or two years ago, where we sat down and had a negotiation. It was basically the local governments sitting down with the attorney general to negotiate how the settlements would be divided. And we, we each had different sort of uh, ways that we could um, – could have done this, and we, we came together with the idea that it would be better if we could um, resolve it um, in one unified way, and that is what led to the creation of the foundation. Um, it, the, some of the important points about the foundation were, the, were, were we going to have local representatives, right? So they're the representatives that are going to be nominated by the governor, but one of the things that, that I, quite frankly, thought was a, a core value for my clients, Jefferson, Berkeley, Morgan, and the city of Charlestown, was that we have, uh, we have a voice on the board. So uh, as a part of that memorandum of understanding, 
um, each region, and these are we've used the DHHR regions of the state um, just as a, as sort of a way to divide the state. Each region got to choose one representative, and then you know within that region, this this wasn't re really reported locally, and I, I don't know why um, the paper didn't cover it at all, but um, e each region. Uh, got to vote on who the representative would be on the board, and the uh, the local governments, their votes for that selection were based on their share of the overall formula that we have been using. And so, you know, but Paul Paul wouldn't have the same amount of votes as Berkeley County. Berkeley County had the greatest um percentage of votes um, out of our region. So you might have like a pawpaw might have a 0.02% where B Berkeley County would have had like 40% of the overall vote. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that then occurred and um, Tim Saya was chosen uh, to represent the region. And then one of the things that as you know, happened was Matt Harvey was also chosen and nominated by the governor. And that is, uh, I can't tell you having those two people to represent the Eastern Panhandle is going to be incredibly significant to, you know, the next 15 years. And, you know, for first time in a long time, we're going to have serious Eastern Panhandle representation um, on a board that's based in Charleston that will allow us to make sure that the Eastern Panhandle gets its fair share of the money. Now, one of the other things that happened in the MOU that was also important is we got a guaranteed spend by region based on impact. So over a number of years, some of the money that the foundation is going to spend has to be spent in each region based on the opioid impact in that region. There's a formula for that. So we're right at this point, and really all we need is a couple of orders from the court, and the, the money will begin to flow. The foundation can really start to do its work. Um, they can hire their staff. Um, they can start look at where the money needs to go immediately, and I, you know, I I hope that within six months we're going to start seeing those dollars actually converted into action. But this last part has been um, pretty painful for, for for many of us who have been working on this, and and that's just the way it works because things like this you don't you don't just show up and get a billion dollars and get that money immediately. Um, a lot of hard work has gone into this, and we're ready to get to the end point. And I look forward to coming back and sort of going through how the money is is going to flow, and I'll be able to tell you specifically, you know, how much money in, in cash um, the the county will get, the cities will get, and then what the foundation is going to get. So. Um, I really look forward to talking about that. Matt Miller. Stephen, are there specific programs or uses that that money must be given to as far as the local governments and their portion of it? Yes. And in the Memorandum of Understanding, um, we um, laid out some what, what we refer to as guardrails um, of how the money must be spent. And so I think that there's a wide uh, avenue <laughs> for the guardrails um, where the money can be spent. But let's not forget, you know, fundamentally this money is about stopping the nuisance. And the, the taxpayers, particularly at the local level, have been paying for the opioid um, uh, epidemic for a very long time out of their pocket. You know, paying jail bills, paying um, for parts of the court system. And so some of that money um, will be able to be used to be paid back to 
for the governments, which is something that they may or may not um, choose to do. You know, when you look at Berkeley County, Berkeley County probably has the largest percentage of their budget in the entire state that goes to substance abuse abatement. Uh, so, you know, the 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 way Berkeley, Berkeley County is, of course, a leader in the state in terms of, of dealing with substance abuse, and they're already funding programs that are cutting edge. So I imagine when the county comes to receiving that money, they already have a place for it. One of the concerns I think that we had when we were uh, coming to an agreement on the guardrails was that there might be some places in West Virginia that were under-resourced that would get the money and spend it uh, in a way that uh, many people would not believe is responsible is a responsible way to spend it. Um, you know, uh, and we those guardrails are meant to prevent that. And there is a reporting mechanism for how the money gets spent. So uh, just to keep a check on it, we don't want to see some some county in southern West Virginia getting the money and using it in, in ways that aren't what it's intended for. When you look at the solution, if you will, that the state has come up with, and you mentioned other uh, states and local governments across the country that are all a part of, of uh, dealing with the opioid crisis and money that's coming and, and the lawsuits and so forth, uh, are, are we kind of in a, in a lead position, if you will? Are, are other states looking at what we're doing? Have we picked any of this up from other states working together? Well, keep, keep in mind, the 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 entire thing starts and 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 ends in West Virginia. You know, the first cases that were filed in the country that are part of this litigation were filed in West Virginia. Um, per capita, we've had the greatest um, impact of the opioid crisis, and per capita, we're going to get the most money. So. What we're doing and what the foundation will do, and we hope, is uh, cutting edge, cutting edge, cutting edge um, abatement. So we're going to be looking all across the country, and then the country is going to be looking at us. You know, uh, the because we are a small state, because per capita we're going to be able to do more. You know, my hope is that. Um, when we look at evidence-based solutions to um, stopping opioid and other substance abuse um, issues in the state, we're going to have a little more latitude than someplace that per capita is getting a tenth of what we're getting. You know, a billion dollars in West Virginia can go a long way. A billion dollars in, you know, Florida is, is nothing. So we, we're, we're going to be very fortunate to do it. So we are both leading and we're collaborating. I mean, they're, they're, uh, the mission for the foundation is to use evidence-based um, solutions. So I, I, I have a lot of hope that they're going to be one of the best in the country, if not the best. Jonathan Bodwell. Stephen, how are you? Um, I'm well done. I think good to good to talk to it's you. It's good to talk to you, man. Hey, I got a I got a question. This is this is more. I'm, I want to just ask you, what do you think? I mean, there are guardrails up, but what do you think is the most important use of the money? You know, after making the the government's whole and stuff like that, where do you want to personally think? Because you've done so much work on it, where do you want to see it go? Well, you know, that's a that's a question that I kind of avoid answering and I'll tell you why. That's because <laughs> <laughs> it not not and I don't mean that to to sound like a politician, but it's because my job has been to represent these three counties and the city and to try and get quite frankly as much money for them directly as I possibly could, and that had to, I had to do a lot of negotiation with the other lawyers representing other local governments, and you know ultimately we were all negotiating with the attorney general. And um, two, it's to um, to make sure that the foundation 
was going to be engaged with the regions so that all the work that we were putting into this um, and that the counties, you know, uh, particularly Berkeley County with its commitment to this from the beginning, um, um, that they were go not going to be ignored later. So there are so many options right now, and I think one of the things that I learned, we had a particularly contentious um, issue that came up, and we were, I had to do a presentation essentially on what Berkeley County Council has done um, since the, you know, in the, in the, in the basically the last uh, 10 years, and it's extraordinary. And Berkeley County's commitment to that and the, the council's choices in how they have led the way for abatement in the state, um, they need to keep doing what they're doing and build on that because they've really kind of had a, a human approach to, to dealing with it and recognizing that we can't, um, we can't simply treat folks with substance abuse disorder as, as, you know, numbers, that they are living people and they deserve um, the opportunity to recover. And when you start looking at, and, and Tim Saya will give you the stats, when you start looking at some of what they've done and how they've dealt with, um, with the recidivism rate, their, their numbers are are, are far beyond what you'll find almost anywhere nationally. So my answer is th that hasn't been my job. My job has been to listen to my clients and advocate for them. But when you look at what my clients are doing, it's, it's pretty darn impressive. And, you know, getting them the funds to continue to do that is, is I think, what this has been about for me as an advocate. Talking with Attorney Stephen Skinner. Go ahead, John. When... Um... I mean, I, I know there's a timeline, but it's, what, about 15 years total that this is going to last? When do you see the, that the money actually starts coming in when it will it will start to get to more programs and hopefully help with more abatement of this horrible problem? Um, I don't. Uh, I don't. I can't tell you any given day how much money there is already in the bank, but we're over $300 million right now. And there's so many different entities that are contributing to this that um, that money, uh, I mean, that's, it's generating a million dollars a month in interest. So once these orders get entered here, I anticipate, you know, some of the checks are going to get written pretty darn quickly. So I, 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 you don't do uh, anybody a, a – a, a good service to to predict in lawsuits like this and and where significant issues occur but honestly you know if if some of this money isn't flowing within six months into actual programs um we're probably doing ourselves a disservice i my hope at least in terms of the direct payments to local governments is that they will receive some of the money um certainly by the end of the year um, but it's it's the the when the money comes in and when it goes out, um, a lot of that's in writing. But some of it, as I as I kind of hinted at earlier, is let's say you make a deal for a hundred million dollars with the company, and then they file for bankruptcy, and then they went out of their settlement. You know, are we going to get that money? You know, we uh, none of this money, by the way, includes the Purdue Pharma money. I mean, I've <laughs> we had to file claims in the Purdue Pharma bankruptcy, and there there has been a settlement, but that settlement has gone to the United States Supreme Court. Um, you know, I think it's a total like six billion dollar settlement, but it, it was giving um, it was giving an out to the folks who owned Purdue Pharma, the family that controlled it. So we don't know that. I mean, I we don't know when we're going to get that money, but. The I think that, you know, certainly within six months, we're going to see dollars in action. This is from Sheriff Nate Harmon, who's listening. He sa Stephen, he says, I really appreciated seeing that out of the multiple initiatives that the West Virginia First Foundation will be funding to address addiction, abuse, treatments, and prevention, that some funding 
will be dedicated to first responders' mental health, considering that they are exposed to these very sad situations daily and being able to better cope with these situations uh, uh, better is important. Wow. I mean, I think the sheriff's exactly right. You know, this looking at at the disorder holistically, you know, the impact on everybody. If you talk to, to anybody who's working day to day, it's not just about the person who has the disorder. It's about their entire family. It's about the people who treat them. It's about those first responders, you know, who are sometimes have to deal with that trauma on a daily basis. When I hear about, when you hear about overdoses and how you respond, you know, you, you can't have folks, you can't just treat them like, um, you know, oh, you did your job today and that's over. Um, you know, and it's important, that's a, it's a, it's a really great point to bring up, you know, uh, w- with less than a week before September 11th. And one of the things that we certainly know from September 11th is that the, the first responders there not only had health issues, but certainly have had mental health issues as, as a result of, of what they had to go through that day and the days after. So that's a great point, Sheriff. Stephen, I know you're on the civil end of this, but uh, the criminal end of this is unforgivable as to what took place with this opioid crisis. Is anybody going to jail for this, or has anybody gone to jail for this? Um, you had a, you've had, <laughs> you you've had a few people go to jail. There've been, uh, there was small one small manufacturer where they pursued some criminal charges, and they went to jail. Um, and I, I, I don't know how to answer that. You know, it's so obvious to me that there were criminal enterprises. Um, going on that and that they're able to sort of exist above the law and i'm talking in these 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 companies these you know fortune 10 companies who knew exactly what they were doing to the state of west virginia when you're when you're sending millions of pills to a town of a hundred people uh i mean you, you you it's intentional and we haven't we just haven't seen it we haven't seen it um from democrats we haven't seen it from republicans and you know i don't i, I don't have the answer to why that has we haven't been able to do that but um or i should say why that hasn't been done but i'm sure as heck glad that um we're able to at least deal with justice in some ways um and that's through, you know, taking from the bottom line. Stephen, thank you so much for your time this morning. Any final thoughts to wrap this up? Just I, I look forward to coming back and, and actually getting into the numbers so everybody can can see what's going on. And hopefully that'll be very soon. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Thank you all.